Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has rejected a ceasefire proposal put forward by Hamas. The Israeli Premier called it, quote, unrealistic. The proposal would have seen the release of women, children, elderly and sick hostages taken by Hamas in the October 7th terror attacks in exchange for Palestinian prisoners. Let's bring in Tanya Kremer, our correspondent in Jerusalem. Tanya, what's Israel's reaction to this ceasefire proposal in detail? Well, we understand that the war cabinet and the wider security cabinet were meeting after Hamas uh, submitted their proposal on Thursday to uh, the mediators. And uh, we understand now after the meetings that uh, the uh, Pr Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu basically said what he also had said late last night in a very short statement that the demands by Hamas are unrealistic. He also called them absurd. Uh, we're talking here potentially that he's referring to to demands that Hamas has put in earlier uh, for a full withdrawal uh, uh, from the Gaza Strip by the Israeli forces as well as a full end to the war, a permanent uh, ceasefire, uh, just some of the uh, sticking uh, points. However, uh, the uh, statement also said that uh, the security cabinet will discuss further the Israeli position and that an Israeli delegation will be sent uh, to Qatar, uh, to Doha, to uh, continue apparently uh, talks. So it's not uh, totally, it seems, uh, the end of it. However, this certainly comes as a, a real disappointment to the families uh, of the hostages that do remain in Gaza, but also to civilians uh, uh, in Gaza that had hoped uh, for a, at least a temporary ceasefire at some point during Ramadan to, um, to get some respite. Now, uh, what can you tell us about the uh, Rafah offensive? Well, also in a statement, uh, um, uh, it was said by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that he approved military plans that had been drawn up earlier by the Israeli military for an operation in Rafah. This is the southernmost city uh, in uh, the Gaza Strip, and as well as uh, uh, to, uh, to order the uh, 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 civilian po population there in Rafah uh, to be evacuated. Uh, there's no timeline given for that. This is an approval of the plans that were put forward by the Israeli military. And that comes, of course, after a lot of cri criticism by the international community, especially also by uh, Israel's closest ally, the United States, not to go ahead potentially with such an operation as uh, there are over 1.4, an estimated 1.4 million Palestinians sheltering uh, uh, in uh, Gaza there in uh, Rafah. But again, these are just the approval of the plans. There is no timeline given uh, when this all will happen. Netanyahu's office also said he has approved plans for a military operation in Rafa in the southern Gaza Strip. It's the last major city in Gaza that Israeli ground forces have not invaded. More than a million displaced Palestinians are now sheltering in Rafa. US officials say they want to know more about the plan. We haven't seen it. Uh, we certainly uh, would welcome the opportunity to see it. And as we've said, Kelly, we uh, can't support uh, a major offensive in Rafa that doesn't also include a credible, achievable, executable plan uh, to take care and to, for the safety and security of the, the more than a million Gazans that are seeking refuge in Rafa to move in right now in a major way without uh, a proper accounting for all those people uh, would, as we've said, be, be a disaster. Our DW Washington correspondent is Benjamin Alvarez Gruber. He's joining me now, which is great because the obvious question is my first, Benjamin. What are the chances of the White House uh, actually seeing Israel's plan for a Rafa operation? We can imagine that there are several talks going on between officials of the U.S. and also from Israel. But the message that we just heard there from the White House was also what Secretary Blinken said in Vienna, where he is currently in Austria. He said it's not just that they want to have information about the plan, but it needs to be credible. It needs to be implementable, an implementable path to protect civilians. And as we just heard, more than one million people are in a place, in a city that was deemed safe. And it's not just where the people are right now, but also 
that that's the point where aid could get into the country. What many are saying is humiliating for the U.S. to need to airdrop food into Gaza, need to build this pier where they also want to ship aid to Gaza without getting its close ally Israel to open the gates for this truck to enter the much needed aid to the people in Gaza. Benjamin Biden just backed a speech from the majority leader in the U.S. Senate, Chuck Schumer, who called Netanyahu an obstacle for peace. Are we seeing a shift uh, at the moment? Is the U.S. pursuing a tougher stance on Israel right now? And what's interesting that today President Biden also endorsed this message, say it was a very good speech without going into details. He said that it was indeed a good speech and that it's a concern that many in this country have. Yesterday, when Chuck Schumer ushered those words, the State Department first said those are his personal views. He does not speak for the Biden administration. That's also what the White House said. But it's not the first time that the Biden administration has criticized Netanyahu, showing a growing frustration here in Washington over how a the government of Benjamin Netanyahu is handling the war in Gaza. Let's just remember a few words from uh, President Biden where he said and accused Netanyahu of hurting Israel more than helping Israel. The thing is now if there will just be words or if there will actually be uh, actions uh, following that. Many have said that the U.S. has no red lines, clear red lines uh, when dealing with Israel. And that's the big question now. If uh, Israel really goes ahead with this ground operation that was approved and that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu also announced, what will be the consequences? Will the U.S. Uh, stop uh, sending weapons to Israel? Or what many have been demanding for weeks, if not for months, is that these arms exports to the U.S. needs to be conditioned as the U.S. does with any other ally around the world. Just briefly before I let you go, uh, Ben, how healthy do you think the relationship between the US and Israel is right now? It is not in great shape and it's also considering what we're seeing here in the U.S. with an upcoming presidential election, it is indeed a topic. When we look at uh, past elections, the number of people who voted and committed criticizing President Biden for his handling in Israel, that is a major topic here with many saying, why are we still is supporting, why are we still sending the weapons? So is indeed when we hear Chuck Schumer, when we hear Joe Biden sending messages, they're not just sending them to Israel, but also sending them here to people in the U.S. who have voiced growing concerns over how the U.S. is still supporting Israel and criticizing also how the government of Benjamin Netanyahu was handling the war in Gaza. DW Washington correspondent Benjamin Alvarez-Gruber, I know you've got a plane to catch. We'll let you go and we'll talk soon.